Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me solving JEE advanced questions and today I have two questions for you, question 4 and question 5 of the 2022 paper 1. Now let's get into the question. This is only question 4, okay? So question 4 states that if this fraction is a real number and z is a complex number with a non-zero imaginary part, then we have to find z's modulus squared. Now, let's look at that fraction. We are given that z is a complex number with a non-zero imaginary part, right? So then this whole thing is just a pile of i, right? But then how can a pile of i's be real? Well, why don't we just try to compile all of the i's into one place and make it a real number? Pretty straightforward, right? So, how do we do that? Well, I'm going to manipulate this fraction and I'm going to show you how. So, that thing is actually equal to 2. Hmm. We can just make it minus, right? But of course, we can't do that because this changes the question. Well, we have to add back six of them, right? And on the bottom, stays the same. Now we can do partial fractions. So we separate it like this. And this is equal to one plus that over that. And on the top is just 6z. Well, there's still a z on the top. That's bad. But we can just divide a z, right? So you can just make this equal to 1 plus. The bottom is divide everything by z. And the top is just 6. No more z's. And we can just put these two together and we can factor out a 2 at the same time. So this is equal to 1 plus, we factor out the 2, it becomes 1 over z plus 2z. And then of course, don't forget the minus 3 and 6. Hmm. Well, the given information tells us that the whole thing is real. So we know that this inside also has to be real. Now, what are the properties of real numbers? Well, real numbers all have imaginary part zero, right? So then this and its conjugates are the same. So we can come to the conclusion that 1 over z plus 2z is equal to 1 over z conjugate plus 2z conjugate right and we can just move this stuff around so we can move this here and factor out the two so it's two times z minus z conjugate and we can just move this here like that Oh, and this is equal to zero. Okay. We let this stay the same. And for this one, we can make them into a common denominator, which is z times z conjugate. And the top is just z conjugate minus z. We see that they're a bit similar, right? But they're just swapped around. But how do we fix that? Well, we can just change this into a negative and then this top will swap itself automatically, okay? So, L and this is equal to zero. So we know that two times Z minus Z conjugate minus Z minus z conjugate over z times its conjugate 
equal to is the modulus squared, correct? And it's equal to zero. Well, look, we have what we want, right? And we can factor out a z minus z conjugate. So it's just z minus z conjugate. And then it is just 2 minus 1 over its modulus squared is equal to 0. Since z has a imaginary part non-zero, then we know that if z subtracts with its conjugate, then this will never be 0. So this implies that this has to be 0, right? So we know that 2 minus 1 over its modulus squared has to equal to 0, right? And now we know that its modulus squared reciprocal is equal to 2. So we know that its modulus squared is equal to 1 over 2. Done. So now it's time for question 5. So question 5 says that you have to find the number of distinct roots of this equation. Hmm. Well, why don't we just first open the brackets? Okay? Pretty straightforward. Z conjugate minus Z squared is equal to I times Z conjugate plus I times Z squared. Right? Now, we can put the conjugates together and the squares together. So we know that that we can factor out a z conjugate to make it become 1 minus i. And similarly, on the right hand side, we can factor out a z squared so that it becomes 1 plus i. Hmm, why don't we observe? There is one super simple root that you can see 0, okay? So we can just put a zero on the side. Okay, just a side note. Okay, now, there are two ways to solve this. One is more traditional, and the second is a bit more fancy. So I'm going to explain to you method one. Is we just let z be equal to x plus y i, right? Pretty traditional. Now, why don't we just divide this here and that there and see what happens. So we know that z conjugate over z squared is equal to 1 plus i over 1 minus i. And we can realize the denominator to make it become 1 squared plus 1 squared which is 2, and the top is just 1 plus i bracket squared, because we multiply by its conjugate. So it's just 1 plus 2i plus i squared, which is negative 1. Now, watch this. Cancel, 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 cancel. Amazing. So this is just equal to i. And now we know that z conjugate is equal to i times z squared. So this is way easier to substitute x plus y i in. And look, we also have to kind of understand what this means. If we multiply something by i, then we rotated it, then we rotate it 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So for example, if this is z conjugate, then z squared would be here. Okay? So this is method one, and I believe that you can continue on from here because it's really easy, because my focus is on method two. Now we go time for method two. Method two is we let the argument 
of z be theta. But why would we let the argument of z be theta? Because the question is asking us the number of distinct roots of that. But that statement is the same as asking you how many distinct arguments of z there are, right? So if we let the argument of z be theta, then let's look at the left hand side. The argument of z conjugate is simply negative theta, right? And then the argument of 1 minus i is pretty simple. You draw it. This is 1. This is negative i. Real. Imaginary. So it's here. Then we know that this has to be negative. And it's obviously power over 4. And when these two arguments are multiplying, then it's just adding. Similarly, on the right hand side, the argument of z squared is not theta squared, but by using the Mover theorem, we know that it's 2 theta. And then we know that the argument of 1 plus i, you draw the graph on your head, it's like this, so it's just pi over 4. So we add pi over 4. Is this it? No. Because to get all of the solutions, then we have to add 2k pi. Okay, so we know that 3 theta is equal to negative pi over 2 minus 2k pi. And I'm going to skip some steps. So we know that theta is equal to negative pi plus 4k pi over 6. You guys can derive this on your own, but I just skipped some steps. Now, we can get to the proper trials, okay? So, uh, when k is equal to 0, then theta will be equal to, you substitute 0 in, it's negative pi over 6. Okay, what about k is equal to 1? Then, theta will be negative 5 over 6 pi. Okay, let's move on to k is equal to 2. Theta is equal to negative 3 over 2 pi. Now, what about k is equal to 3? If k is equal to 3, then theta is negative 13 over 6 pi. And this data is the same as adding 2 pi to this. So this is equal to, you add 2 pi to it, which is negative pi over 6. Well, look. It repeats. So we have to eliminate k is equal to 3 from our choices. So all we have are three solutions. k is equal to 0, 1, and 2. Wait a second. What about at that z is equal to zero? So there are four solutions. So the answer is four. Done. So these are the final answers of this JEE Advanced 2022 Paper 1 for question 4 and 5. And just a little note. These two questions are super similar to HSC questions. And I'm very surprised to see that happen. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoy my videos, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.